everyone, I'm Mr. Chick. And I'm Mr. Matt. And we are in our two-part Christmas series called Jesus Brings, talking about the different things that we receive because Jesus came to earth. Now, last week, we talked about how Jesus brings us freedom and purpose. <laughs> It's it's Milo. It's my friend's dog that I'm watching. I'm gonna kick you now. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do that because I actually love this dog. Oh, okay. Now that that is mercy. Cause <laughs> look at your pet leg. It's like shredded. <laughs> what? Oh man, I just got these pants. Okay. Well. <laughs> Actually, that brings us to what we're going to be talking about today in this week's lesson, how Jesus brings us mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Don't they mean the same thing? Yeah, I think that they're said together quite a bit, but they're actually different. Actually. Put away. Huh? Why are you dressed like that? And what are you doing? <laughs> Well, I am dressed like this and dressed like a professor today because uh, I thought we're gonna be talking about a lot of important things and I wanna put on a professor outfit because it does make me look a little bit smarter. And we now have matching glasses. Well, okay, I guess if it works for you. You know, it sure does. And boy, maybe I should do this every week. Okay, well, here we go. So mercy, mercy is when deserved action is withheld. And in the case of your pants, maybe a bit of a strong push would have definitely helped Milo release your pants. But you didn't push Milo away. Yeah, I didn't withhold a strong push because I didn't want to rip my pants. Right, so here's a question for you to talk about in your equip group. Is there a time when someone withheld something you probably deserved, or maybe you did that for someone else? Like maybe you didn't get mad at your brother or sister for eating the last brownie. Or maybe you didn't spray your friend with your super soaker when you had the perfect chance when they were unarmed after they just completely soaked you moments before. All right, so here's the question. Is there a time when someone withheld something you probably deserved or you did that for someone else? Right, so talk about that in your equip group and we'll see you back here shortly. So instead of kicking Milo, what did you do instead? I guess I spoke nicely to Milo and I could have gotten down and give him a hug. Right, exactly, ah, exactly. You gave him a loving word and you could have given him something that he didn't deserve, something loving. And that is grace? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Grace is getting something that we don't deserve at all. 
No, you know what? Like my wife, Jovi, she graciously brings me my favorite desserts from its bakery that I love. That word grace is the root word of graciously. Right. So, um, I'm supposed to be the professor today. So, you're not teaching. I'm teaching. So, okay. okay, okay let's okay, make okay, sure okay. we're straight here, okay? All right. I'm so sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> we got a lot of ground to cover here. Here we go. So, that brings me to another question. What are some gifts you've received but you really didn't deserve? Talk about that uh, in your equip group and we'll see you back here shortly. We don't really talk much about mercy and grace during the Christmas holidays. Words like hope, joy, and give tend to be on the list. Yeah, and those are very much part of the Christmas season. But if we look at why we even have Christmas in the first place, mm -hmm. mercy and grace are at the top of the list. Yes, before Jesus came, the people were working really hard attempting to follow all of God's commandments. My question is, what are some things you try really hard to do and maybe you keep doing them and have to say sorry a lot for mm. So for example, I get really angry at myself when I try to find my worth in doing things for people so that they like me or trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I just keep forgetting that I am a child of God and I don't need to do anything to make him love me more. And for me, I get frustrated when I can't, you know, get things my way. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask God to forgive me for not trusting Him. So what are some things you try really hard to do and maybe you keep doing them and have to say sorry a lot for? Mm -hmm. Share that with your group and we will see you back here shortly.
So before Jesus came, God promised not to destroy Israel when they sinned against him. Mm -hmm. He had made a covenant with them, and God always keeps his promises. That's right. So God had an alternative way of dealing with their sin and rebellion. It was a symbolic ritual called animal sacrifice. The Israelites were sinful, and they were corrupt, and they were going to keep on sinning. So they were in need of God to purify and cleanse them. And so they needed a system that would turn them away from their sin, Mm -hmm. pay for the wages of their sin, cleanse and purify them, and allow them to stay in God's presence. And this brings us to this practice of animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. By sacrificing an animal, it was a symbolic death, a symbol of what is really at stake, the life or death consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't about a reminder of sin's tragic consequences. The animal's life was offered as a substitute to deal with the Israelite's sin and provide a reliable system to maintain a right relationship between God and sinful humans. They would offer sacrifice of a pure animal such as a lamb to wash away the sins of the people. This is called atonement. This sacrifice was that God had set up with the Israelites long ago to atone for sin. Mm -hmm. Now, however, it was getting a little bit too complex because the people obviously kept sinning and they needed to go to the priest more often Mm -hmm. and it was getting busier and busier and there were lots of questions Mm -hmm. and let's just say it got really, really frustrating. So just like in the book of Judges, we have been looking at the people cried out for God to save them. In this case, to send the Savior, he promised. Yep. So after 400 years, God offered the ultimate solution. Mm -hmm. God sent Jesus as the sacrifice for the whole world. Because Jesus was God's son, he perfectly displayed God's mercy and grace Mm -hmm. through his death and resurrection. So people didn't need to go to the temple priest anymore. Nope. Um, Because when he did this, Jesus became the perfect sacrifice that would replace the old animal sacrificial system. Jesus did no wrong, but willingly gave himself to die for the sins of mankind. Jesus took our sin upon himself and died in our place. The animal sacrifice has served as a substitute who died in place of the sinner, but it was temporary. That is why they had to happen over and over again. Mm -hmm. Animal sacrifices stopped with Jesus. He was the ultimate sacrificial substitute for all time and became the only way to restore our relationship with God. Exactly. So God didn't want to be without us, but he couldn't let... Uh, us be in a relationship with him uh, and live forever with him in heaven in our sinful state. Mm -hmm. And because our sin separates us from God and the punishment for that sin is death. But God is full of kindness and compassion and does not punish us as our sins deserve. And that is his mercy. Mm -hmm. But what does this have to do with Christmas? Hmm, Well, God did not actually stop there because if he only gave us mercy, we would still be sinners and still not able to enter his kingdom. He did something more than take away our punishment. Yeah, he is so good. And he did one step further because God extended his grace. What? He gave us something he didn't deserve? Like candy canes? (laughs) No, he, he did something better. All right, let's stand and read our Bible passage today together. In the the sixth month month of Elizabeth's Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Well, here's something interesting when the angel told Mary. You who are highly favored. The angel used the same word, the Hebrew noun, shanan, for favored, and that can also be translated as grace. Oh, where, where are you getting all this info? Like, you are like a book of knowledge today, Mr. James. Wow. <laughs> just, just wait for it. You are going to see it in a whole different way. Let's continue with the next part of the Bible passage. Okay. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Mm -hmm. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Wow, that's great. If you're still standing, you guys did a great job. Well done, you can have a seat now. Can you imagine? An angel of God came and told this young girl, not much older than you, that she not only had found favor with God, but she would also be blessed further with the grace and gift of God. Mary was full with God's gift to us. Full. Literally. Literally. Like, full. Yeah. Mary didn't have to do anything. She just had to be, to be her beautiful, humble self that God created her to be. And God picked her to bring God's grace to the world for everyone. Jesus was a good gift that Mary never deserved. The child she had done nothing to conceive. The perfect son where she did not have to read any parenting books to know how to raise properly. And the savior that she so desperately needed. She brought him into this world for the good of all humankind. Jesus brings mercy and grace. But how does Christmas meet our need for God today? Why have this holiday? Well, it wasn't for the candy canes. True. Mm. Ta-da! You do have candy canes. Well, wow! <laughs> it's, it's not for this, okay? Thank you. Okay, really? Mm -hmm. But enjoy your candy canes while we continue. Oh, I will. Oh, them. Yes, okay, them. keep going. Jesus came not because he wanted to celebrate a birthday party or give students two weeks off from school every year. His sights were aimed much higher than that. Jesus came on a rescue mission. Mm -hmm. You know, our sin had us so trapped, so lost, and so hopeless, and eternal judgment was clearly in our future. No matter how hard we tried, we just couldn't be quite good enough. We always fell short. We always failed to measure up. I haven't yet to meet someone who doesn't believe that they have sinned, regardless of what their religious beliefs are or what they think about God. I have never met someone who didn't believe that they have not messed up in some way or another. Mm -hmm. And people will do all sorts of things to make up for that feeling, that sin in their That's life. Right. They will work hard to be a good person or mm -hmm. hoping that if the good things we do outnumber the bad things that we do, that means that we're good people and God must love good people, right? So, people give money to charity. They give their lives to their family and close relationships, making sacrifices for others. Mm -hmm. They shan't pray and meditate. They try to figure out something that will stick, that will help them stop feeling what sin does mm -hmm. in their lives. Now, these are all good things mm -hmm. to do. However, if it does not come from God's Holy Spirit as He works through us, we actually lose the main point. That's right. While everyone was trying to be good enough, God came on a rescue mission to save us from our sin and ourselves. That's right. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. And that is why we celebrate Christmas, to celebrate Jesus' birth and remember how Jesus brings us mercy. Mm -hmm. He brings us forgiveness and compassion to free us from our sins and the bad things that we've done. He offers to remove the punishment of our sins for us if we only surrender ourselves to Him. We also celebrate how Jesus also brings us grace. Jesus not only offers to take the punishment for our sins, He offers to give us true and abundant life. The grace of Jesus brings us everlasting life, a relationship with God who created us that will last forever. Mm -hmm. Jesus came not to make us his slaves, but to restore us into his family as beloved sons and daughters. And that is the gracious gift that he brings, the ability to call ourselves a child of God. And that's something to celebrate. That's right. Jesus brings mercy and grace. We just need to receive him. Mercy takes away the death we deserve, the eternal separation from God. Grace gives us the life we don't deserve, 
but the life that God had always created us to live. Yeah. So we don't have to work so hard to be strong or smart. Mm -hmm. He works through us better when we are weak and not the smartest person in the room. I guess I really actually hmm. don't need to wear any of these clothes, hey? <laughs> <sighs> well, God loves you. Okay. God loves you just the way you are. All of you, all of us. No need to be something we are not. Mm. God is so good to send us what we needed. So, Mr. Matt, why don't you pray for us today? Okay, I'd love to. All right, let's pray together. God, thank you so much uh, for this message today as we remember this Christmas, how you came, Jesus, to die as the ultimate sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. And God, thank you that in your mercy that you sent Jesus to be that sacrifice, to take the place for the punishment of our sins. And God, thank you that through Jesus Christ, we can live a life abundantly, Amen. a life that you designed for us to have and your grace allows us to do that. And so God, today I pray for any student right now who's wrestling with or thinking about what does it mean to follow you? That's right. I pray through right now, Jesus, that you would speak to each of them. If, God, they don't know you or have a relationship with you, I pray you give them courage today to talk to their equip leader about starting that relationship mm -hmm. today with you Amen. to find, so they can find forgiveness uh, through you, Jesus, for all the things that they've done in their lives, that sin that separates us from you, mm -hmm. and so that we can live the abundant life that you, that you want for us. So, God, we are uh, so grateful for you, Jesus. Uh, coming to earth for us. And God, we pray as we go into our equip groups that you would bless our conversations and that we would just continue to be reminded that Christmas is so much more than gifts and all That's the different right. things that we have Amen. that yes. we're going to experience. Yes. Yes. It is about your mercy and grace mm -hmm. and how you came to earth for us because you love us, you're with us, and that you want what's best for us and you want to be in relationship with us. So mm -hmm. God, thank you for all you're doing. Bless my friends as they go now and uh, be with us the rest of this week and pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it for today. Merry Christmas, everybody. And make sure you ask God this week and this Christmas season how you can show mercy and grace to other people around you that are in your lives and your family and at school. All right, Merry Christmas, you guys. Oh, hi, Milo. Hey. My, Milo. No. Down. He's caught me. He's caught my legs. I think Milo likes you, Matt.